Are you feeling under pressure? Are you feeling pressure from the internet and all those well-meaning strangers to sow your seeds before you're sure it's time? Because you're not alone. So let's see if I can help. I'm going to show you some of my experiences from the last 12 years or so and show you the difference between early sown tomatoes and tomatoes I've sown in an unheated greenhouse in March. No extra heat or light. And I think you might be surprised. Because I've been making blogs and filming in the garden for the last sort of 12 years or so, I've always got lots of not only my own data to go by, but I've usually got the odd photo or even video clip I can share with you. So that's what we're doing. So today I'm going to be busting some myths about um, me, because I've discovered there are some things you guys sort of think about us that aren't quite accurate. So I'm going to bust some myths for some of you new guys who don't know better. And I'm also going to be talking about the whole thing of when to sow your seeds. So I'm going to show you some evidence about the big topic this month is sowing tomatoes and sowing them in January or February or March. So um, let's get started. Some basil, some spinach, some spring onions. Ooh, yeah. I've been sewn and grown on some weird stuff just for fun. This is one of them. Um, right, I'll never get this right. Uh, Sideritis syriaca. Sideritis syriaca. Its common name in the UK is ironwort, but this is a variety that gets grown as Greek mountain tea. It gets grown in the mountains in Greece, funnily enough. But I love this stuff. I drink a lot of it. Um, it has some benefits for me and my health problems, which is one of the reasons why I drink it. The other is because I like it. But it's really expensive. Um, and I tried once before to grow this and I have not been successful. And I can't give up. I have to have another try, so I'm trying it again. I jokingly told Kate she was in charge of all the flowers this year. She seems to have taken it to heart. She's taken all my flower seeds in our seed box. Biden's. Oh, I thought I didn't have any saved seeds left. I do. And I've got some bought seeds. So these are things I'm going to be sowing. And again, you don't need to sow these with me. You can if you want. You don't need to. It might not suit your environment. But one of the big things... This is so unplanned today, can you tell? I bet you wish you were as organised as me. Right, okay. Basil seeds. Here's the thing. So I said I was going to broadcast so that just means doing that whole wide sprinkle thing rather than being all careful about one seed at a time. But with tiny little seeds, sometimes it's easier to do it this way. Much quicker as well. These are my collected Biden seeds from my Bidens. Now, it's a bit of an experiment. I don't know what to expect because the plants were most likely hybrids, so won't come true. But I just think it's going to be interesting to see what I get. because my Bidens were a mix. Um, oh no, the colours were a mix, not the plants. They were called hot and spicy and the flowers were a mix of yellows and oranges. And the little flowers, they were gorgeous and I loved them. But they may not come back like that. They may come back some might be yellow, some might be orange, some might be red. Whatever it was, was the genetic mix that went in to make those, may now come true. So we'll just have to wait and see. So I just think that's really interesting, not knowing what's coming up. But just in case my saved seeds aren't viable, I've got some bought seeds. And these ones are golden goddess, so these will just be yellow. 
So um, it's not my favourite to have the single colour Bidens, but um, I find Biden seeds, you don't get a lot of choice. You can buy plug plants and you'll get more choice that way. But that is why I saved seeds from my own, was to give me a wee bit of a chance of getting those. Be cool if they come back. And this will be my spring onions. These are still to be done. So let's get down to the myth busting then. I have only ever twice sowed my seeds early. That's right. In the 12 years that we have been in this garden and I have been gardening, I've only ever sown my seeds early twice and it's for a specific years I can tell you about now and for a specific purpose. So let me give you the backstory then. Um, we have been blogging and YouTubing about this garden for a long time. We've been blogging about it first, been blogging about it the longest. So we started blogging way back in 2012 when we moved into this garden. We only started YouTube in 2016, but in that entire time, I always started my seeds in March in my unheated greenhouse with no heat and no lights. There's only been the twice that I've actually started things early and both times it was about me experimenting because I had seen other people doing it. I didn't know about it, so I was experimenting for me. And that was in 2021 and 2022. Now here's the thing. First myth is about me and when I start my seeds. So here's the thing. The reason so many people think I start my seeds early is because those two years were when our channel kind of took off, if you like. Before the pandemic, we had about 1,000, 1,500 subscribers on the channel. Um, a lot more on the blog, but on the YouTube channel. Um, and then we suddenly took off like everyone else during the pandemic. And a lot of you guys joined us then. So that was your first experience of seeing me starting seeds and growing, was those years when I was doing those experiments and starting early. So those years, I started my peppers in January and I think the first year I started tomatoes in January, the second year February, I think it was. But to be honest, it was mid-month, early month. It was only a few weeks between. Um, but last year, which was 2023, I sowed everything in March. And then, believe it or not, I re in April because I got severe damping off and lost everything. So last year I was actually later than ever in getting things going. So here's the thing. This is the big myth I'm going to burst. Here in my garden, in the central belt of Scotland, it's cold even in March. I can't put plants outside in March. But in my unheated greenhouse, myth number two busted. <laughs> this is an unheated greenhouse. I can put my seeds in here and they will get going. So they're protected from frost when they're in here. Because in March we might still be getting a frost but it's still relatively cold. On a sunny day, it will warm up in here. I mean, not roasting hot, but it'll warm up and the soil in here will warm up, but it drops again at night. So it does mean things are slow to get going when you start them in here in March, but they will get going. So here's the thing. I said I've got some evidence for you. I'm going to show you. So let me show you here a series of clips here on my left, your right. I'm going to show you clips each month of my tomatoes when I have started my seeds in March. On this side, I'm going to show you clips of my tomatoes that I started early in the beginning of February. Okay, now what we're going to see here is each month a comparison. And I want you to watch because at the beginning of the year, you're going to see how much of a difference there is in the plants. The plants that were started early are obviously going to be much, much taller. Okay, but I'm going to come back once we've watched them and I'm going to get you to really look at some things that you won't have noticed. So we're going to start with April. 
The reason we're starting with April is because obviously by that point the March sown seeds have germinated and grown so that way I've got both sets to show you. There's no point in me showing you January, February because obviously only January or February sown seeds will exist then. You know what I mean. But anyway, April, let's look at this then. So as I said then, that is the plants that I sowed in March, okay? That is the plants that I sowed early in February. Look at the difference, okay? You'll see, obviously, they've come on quite a lot more. They're quite big. Let's flip to May. May is quite a good month to show you and I'm going to come back to this month. So you can see the difference again. The early sown tomatoes are massive compared to the other ones. Keep flipping, June. And June's a good month. I want you to really pay attention now. So we've got the start of June here and you can see still it's the same. It's quite obvious which seeds were sown first. But by the end of June, things have really caught up. And as we flick through July and then even into August, you can see now there's no difference. So that period of June, July, August is important because for me, here again in my garden, that's those months when tomato plants are really going for it. They're flowering, perhaps even starting to grow their first little tomatoes. And this is really, really important. I want to show you something brilliant about this. So I said we were going to go back. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the fact that things will catch up. So as I said then, June, the end of June for me is when you can really see that sown early makes no difference really. Apart from one, when I sowed the tomatoes early, just my standard tomatoes I'm talking about here, um, I did get tomatoes early, but there wasn't a lot of them. So I got my first tomato ever, my earliest tomato ever, on the 21st of May. First sun gold of the season. Hmm. You cannot beat homegrown tomatoes. I know gardeners keep saying it, but you totally can't. There's nothing like street from the plant. <laughs> Many more to come from those really early sown tomatoes. However, do you remember I told you about the year I did the experiment where I put a heater in the greenhouse in April? That was why. Those plants were so big, I just didn't have space for them in the house anymore. So I had to bring them out and put them in the greenhouse. And of course, it was far too cold and they just would have died. In fact, I did a whole video about it shown you exactly what happened to those tomatoes. They all got severely stressed, the soil was far too cold and they stopped taking up the nutrients from the soil. They basically, the, the nutrients became locked out to them, the little roots couldn't do their job. And because of that, I had all these really purple leaves, dying leaves, wilted plants. The plants were just under severe stress. So of course, I had to put the heater in the greenhouse and over time it rectified the situation. But if I hadn't been able to heat the greenhouse, those plants would have been goners. So that's your first thing to think about. Those plants do get big very quickly. As you can see, do you have space to keep all of your plants in the house with the conditions they need? And mostly that is about light. They need a lot of light. And if you've got them in a window ledge, they're obviously going to lean towards the light. So these are all things you're going to have to think about. Now, that year also, hurrah, I got my first tomato uh, 21st of May after I'd put a heater in the greenhouse to save them, okay? But I didn't suddenly just get heaps of tomatoes. I only got that one early and then it was weeks before I got the next one and it still was a bit of time before I started getting a harvest. So it wasn't like I suddenly was getting a normal summer harvest early. Also, I had a lot of problems that year with blossom end drop. Now here's the thing, I don't normally have an issue with it because I grow in something called a quad grow system that gives the plants a nice even watering. But when you start your seeds early and they get cold 
and the soil's cold and they're not able to take up the nutrients, that causes blossom end drop. So those first tomatoes that started forming on the plant were a waste. So many of them had blossom end rot and had to be binned. And it was the same for my peppers that year. So something to be cautious of. But let's jump to the happies then. Let's jump to June. So I said by the end of June, everything had really caught up. You can see it yourself. The plants are just about the same size. July, August, look at it. But here's another thing I've noticed. And this is something last year, Gardener Scott and I were comparing our tomato plants because we were growing along together. And I was trying to grow tomatoes to go outdoors in my garden like he does. And he was trying to grow plants in his greenhouse like I do. But one of the things that we both noticed, and Scott actually mentioned it in a video, is the tomatoes that I saw in March in the greenhouse with no extra heat or light were much, much healthier than the plants that were brought on in a false environment with added heat and light. They were much shorter and dumpier because obviously they didn't have all that extra heat and light. But they were much greener, they had much more foliage, generally they were just much sturdier and healthier plants. And that meant when I did plant them up into their quad grows or into the garden, they took off fast. And last year was one of my best years ever harvest wise, even though we got blight on the tomatoes outdoors. We still had a stunning year last year from tomatoes that were sown in April. So I've shown you then, if you're worried, please don't be. So if you're feeling pressured by all the advice on the internet about sow your seeds, don't sow your seeds, just remember then the thing I always say to you guys, and it's you do you. You always need to garden for your garden, your environment, your climate, your conditions, what you have. If you have a greenhouse, maybe you only have a little zip up poly greenhouse. Maybe you don't have anything at all. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe it's too hot for that in your climate. There are so many variables. So you need to do what works for you. But just remember, everyone else on the internet is telling you about them. It doesn't mean they're telling you you need to do what they do. They're just excited and showing their stuff off. Which, let's face it, we all do. And on that note, I want to say a massive shout out and a round of applause. I put a little poll out on YouTube and I asked you guys how you were feeling, if you were feeling pressured by other people and what they were doing on the internet. And I asked you if you feel pressured when I sow seeds. And for the guys brave enough to admit that even when I'm telling you to do things your way, you still feel a little bit of pressure to copy me. I just think, well done you for being brave and admitting that. But please don't ever feel pressured by what I do. And if you are worried and you're not sure, just shove a wee comment under the video and just say that. Just say, you're watching me, you're thinking about getting going, you're wondering if you should ask your questions. We've got a massive big community of gardeners on this channel. We all do things differently. So somebody will be in your area and will grow in your climate. Okay guys, I hope that helped to show you the difference between starting your tomato seeds early and waiting until things are right for you in your environment. I think it's really interesting when you've got all of this footage over the years, it's brilliant to look back and see what actually happened rather than what you think you remember happened. Okay docs, if you want to watch some of those videos for yourself, I've got two playlists that I'll put in the description of the video and I'll put them here for you, showing early sown and sown in March. I hope that's fun guys. See ya!